Hello, Blake Rudis here with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com, and today we're going to play a little game called How Well Do You Trust Adobe Photoshop to Align Your Images? Now, what you're looking at is the before image that I did with a tone map photograph straight out of Photomatics, and the after image is what we're going to get afterwards. So all the work that you see here that's been done on this layer, I've done a lot of digital zone system, color zone system, it looks really good. But if you look at the background, on the original image, if we zoom in here, you can see that the tone mapping process did not give me a good transition in that original sunset that the original source image did. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that tone mapped image that I did all that work on, and we're going to make the sky better, but we're going to use Adobe Photoshop's Align automatically to see just how well it works. Okay. So let me go ahead and open up that image. Okay, so this is the photograph after I ran my digital zone system and color zone system on it. Got all my tones just where I wanted them, but the background here, anytime you have a sky like this, it's very difficult to work with because it's actually, while it looks like a smooth transition, it's built up of different bands of color, so it didn't look right. But I liked what happened with the original zero exposure value area when I modified some settings in Adobe Camera Raw. So you can see there's a nice transition back there with that light to dark, and we get that really good, um, kind of like desert style sunset. So while I'd love to have some clouds there, it just didn't happen this time. So I opened up the zero EV exposure value and I'm gonna go ahead and move it over here real quick. I'm gonna press the V key. And I'm gonna drag and drop this right on top of my other image while pressing the shift key. And that will typically align them like it should. So you should have a, a good alignment from the middle. Now you can see that during my processing on that tone mapped image, I did some straightening, some cropping, so on and so forth. So it doesn't really look right here with this photograph. So typically what I would do here when I want to get that source image back is I'd go up with the V key selected. I'm in the move tool. Make sure that the background layer is free. Grab both of these layers and click right here where you've got this looks like two images side by side. And we're going to press auto align layers and go auto. Press OK. So when you do that, Photoshop is going to look at all of the characteristics of the image that you're working on, and it's going to try to align them and just kind of merge them on top of each other. So if we do a little click the eyeball off and click the eyeball on, by first eye it looks alright. Let's do a quick selection. So I'm going to get my uh, magic wand tool here, and I'm going to select this top layer, and actually let me use the cooler brush, which is the quick selection tool, and I'm just going to go ahead and make a selection for that top area here. I'll take all that. Why not? Let's just take all this and that looks pretty good. So let's go to refine edge and let's just do a really quick refine edge because you're going to see here that this doesn't quite work out so well. So let me just refine edge real quick. Just paint over this pretty haphazardly. I'm not really worried too much about everything now. I'll get into that in a second. Okay and then I'll press OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and make a mask for that after those refine edge has been done. And if you look even though I pressed auto align, it didn't align them properly. So Photoshop got a little confused. So let's go back before selection. Let's go to the auto align layers. So now I'm back where I was when I first hit auto align layers. If I want to double check how well Photoshop did at aligning those layers, I'm going to go to here where it says normal, change that to difference. And if you see that there's an offset, an image that's perfectly aligned will have more of a black look to it like this. Everything's all aligned. The only problem we're having here is with some chromatic aberration on the sides where one has more than the other. But if it's off like this, it's not aligned properly. You can see that little haze that's there. So I just move this over just slightly. Photoshop didn't have it right right out of auto align layers. So that happens sometimes and oftentimes with the HDR process you need to have that original source image and bring it in so that you can fix the sky like I'm showing here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to normal and another area where you're going to use this in your HDR photography is typically when you're merging layers. So if you're merging the plus two and the minus two, you'll do that. In the course Exploring HDR, the video series, I discuss this in that course and how even though you auto align the layers, it's always a good idea to double check Photoshop with that difference layer. Just change that top layer that you're putting on top of the other one to difference. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the eyeball off of this one. I want to crop this image down to where it's supposed to be on this photograph. And once I have this cropped, press Enter for OK. Turn that eyeball back on, and now I'll make another selection. So this selection, I actually do want to be a little bit better with it because I don't want it to be too uh, bad. 
I need some that should be about good. It's a decent enough selection for the Refine Edge tool. So now I'll just go into that Refine Edge tool and I'll make my brush a little bit smaller here. It looks like it needs to be a little bit smaller to get these details. I'm just pressing the plus. I'm keeping the plus inside the area that I want to keep. And then when I move over areas like this, I'll just go ahead and haphazardly go around it and then move all the way around. I even want to get some of this background in here. So I'll do that too. Cause that'll help make a nice smooth transition between one photo and the next. Okay, and then go over and do this side because I missed that side at first. And you're really just going over every outline that that uh, original brush tool that you selected to make your selection gets covered. So all these areas that are little black tips on the trees, I want to capture all those. So we'll just go ahead and click over all those. And now I'll press OK. So now when I press the mask key, we should have that nice background on top of my HDR image so I get a better background photo. Now we might need to do some cleaning up and to look at that mask if you just click on the mask and press the forward slash key you can see in red the areas that are going away. If you press alt or option on it you can see exactly where that mask is affecting. So I'm going to go ahead and use my brush tool and just kind of brush this out a little bit. I don't want a hard edge brush though I want a soft edge brush so I'll bring this down bring the softness down and just kind of go over this background area a little bit and we'll hit this area too. Let's see here, what does that bring us? Press, just click on the mask and that'll go away. So there's our mask now, perfectly aligned with our layer. Now if you need to zoom in here, you can tell that there is a little bit more in this zero exposure value and there is some chromatic aberration there, so I could fix that chromatic aberration. I'm in CC, so I can just press Control Shift A and go right into Adobe Camera Raw, go into the lens correction, go to color, remove chromatic aberration, I'll zoom in and then increase those amounts and that will take care of it on a regular exposure. Now I'll get rid of my chromatic aberration so that's gone. And now if I needed to I could feather this layer. So if you look now, if we look at that layer it's got really hard edges on it. So if I go to properties and go to feather and just feather it by like one or two pixels usually help, helps to blend that a little bit better. So how well do you trust Photoshop to auto align your layers? And if you do get frustrated, what do you do? Well, you just change that top layer that you auto align to the bottom layer, change it to difference. And that will let you see, if we change it to difference now, that will let us see exactly what areas are uh, auto aligned or, or not aligned in this case. And everything looks pretty good in this one. I would probably do some more touching up with that if I was to actually make this a, a uh, finished project. Just to show you that the alignment tool doesn't always work top notch in Photoshop. So I'm Blake Rudis. If you like this, go ahead and click like, share, share it with your friends who are HDR photography nuts. Um, this is a little snippet of something that was shown in Exploring HDR, the video series. So you can go ahead and click in that little description below if you're on YouTube and you can get a link to that. If you're on everydayhdr.com, there'll be a link to that in the post. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.